You regard other people as dispensable and unexceptional. In other words, they don't have your standing, and therefore you have a right to prevail. So the Wolfowitz Doctrine itself comes back to the neoconservative ideology that dominates American politics. It dominated, it came in in the second Clinton regime, it dominated the two terms of George W. Bush, and it has dominated the Obama administration. If you look at the appointees in the Bush and Obama administrations, they are almost universally neoconservative. Well, and that was Paul Craig Roberts, the chairman of the Institute for Political Economy in the United States. I would like to quote from a recently published article by one of the most well-known investigative reporters in the United States, Robert Perry, who broke many of the Iran-Contra stories for the Associated Press and Newsweek in the 1980s. So, in his recent article, titled Behind Obama's Chaotic Foreign Policy, published on the 21st of August, he wrote, and I quote, President Barack Obama's foreign policy has been disjointed and even incoherent because he has, since taking office in 2009, pursued conflicting strategies, mixing his own pension for less belligerent realism with official Washington's dominant tough guy ideologies of neoconservatism and its close cousin liberal interventionism. End quote. So now we're proceeding to discuss the subject with our guest speaker, Lyndon LaRouche, one of the most experienced American analysts and the founder and director of Executive Intelligence Review Press Service. Obama is a complete failure. There's no question about that. But failures can come in various forms. I mean, they can careen, shall we say, into a mess. And uh, we don't know exactly how this is going to occur. But obviously, Obama is a mess. If we don't get rid of him in the United States, we could have a much bigger mess. Uh, we know that the fact that this is not sustainable, that uh, we'll be going to a new phase of things with the BRICS in the South America and so forth, other parts of the world, China, India, all these areas are now moving in to provide a sane approach to resolving the, the problems of our planet. That's where I am. That's where I worry. That's what I fuss about is I'm concerned about the fact that there are risks involved in trying to get this thing done right. But I, I would say that the point is that uh, what we've got is a pic an interesting picture. You have all the way from China, which is now one of the greatest powers that ever appeared on, on this planet, and China's ability to deal with what it's doing now in terms of energy development is tremendous. So that therefore, we've got the nations, India, Russia, China, the nations of the BRICS uh, states, these are all nations which are ready to gather together and to begin to solve these problems. And I'm just, just holding on to my part to try to keep this thing alive and working. What's important is, I mean, when you compare, for example, what Russia was doing on the question of development and what was doing, China was doing, there were very particular distinctions, but there was also convergence. There has been an increasing convergence of Russia's work in trying to come to an agreement with what is going on in Asia in general. So to me, this is something we want this. And I, when I say we, I mean South America, I mean Asia in general, so forth. We want this because we now know we have capabilities which we can develop, which will solve a lot of these problems. And I'm just <laughs> one of the many people who wants to get at it and solve these problems. Like this, this silly thing, the whole silly thing that's going on in Germany now. What makes me surprised, you know, is that whenever the current U.S. administration, whenever they step in, they create chaos. Is it a deliberate effect or is it a mistake? 
It's a British Empire effect. What's that? The British Empire runs the whole operation. Is it their purpose to, to create chaos? That's it, exactly it. Or what's their interest? <laughs> They control it. Is it a realistic project to control chaos? It is. It's absolutely it's an intentional program to crush everything in, in sight. And this is what this is about. And we, what we're dealing with is trying to figure out, on the one hand, how to deal with this kind of threat with a minimum risk. That's our problem. And I, that, I mean, when I look at what faces Putin, for example, in terms of what he has to do from day to day, that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the factor of risk. He's constantly dealing with the question of risk. And it's a complicated situation, which means that he has to be constantly managing on risk. But the positive thing is he's got China. He's got India. He represents these things. And in the process, when this thing is cleared, when the smoke is cleared, we're going to find there's going to be a new planet or something that functions like a new planet because the old ways are going to go and they are going to go fast. I'm just waiting for us to get there. This is the second part of Burning Point, in which we're discussing President Obama's foreign policy and the emergence of a new world order with our guest speaker, Lyndon LaRouche, American economist and political analyst, and the founder and director of Executive Intelligence Review Press Service. Sir, but I remember uh, not so long ago, the U.S. was talking about engaging China. Is it still trying to engage China? The point is you've got the president of the United States as a crook. <laughs> What do you expect? <laughs> the thing, think about it. Look at it the way I think of it. We have South America. Now, South America has now become a collection of bricks, a matter of nations which are piling in together for mutual defense and mutual development. We're finding in similar things in, in Africa, as I, the ISIS thing in Africa. We're finding that the fact what's happening in terms of India, all these nations, all these groups of nations are converging on a single result. That is the creation of a new system of government among the nations of the planet. And that's, that's what we're struggling for. And uh, the latest developments around Israel, are they part of the reaction to this attempt to create a new system? Israel is a mess. It's a hopeless mess. And it will have to be, it'll have to be sorted out in the whole process. It's gone crazy. Israel has become a crazy nation. It has no respectability anymore. But uh, has it become a crazy nation on its own? What happened is you had, you know, I was very close to a lot of people in the Israeli community during the immediate post-war period. And I've had, you know, leading, leading members of the, of the movement of that time. I was part of that. I wasn't a, a member, but I agreed with them. And I agreed that, that their efforts were worthwhile. And I thought that their efforts could lead to a peaceful solution to that region. And we came very close to it. But then we had the right wing that came in, in, uh, in the Israel. And the, when the right wing came in in Israel, the whole thing has been going to hell since that time. Do I get you right that all those wars that are going on now are the process of birth of the new world order? There is, well, there has to be a new world order. The new world order is, is based on, not on what most people think would be a new world order. The point is, it's very simple. There are certain nations which must come together. They already are trying to come together. They are trying to be independent of this nonsense that goes on. But you look at India. India's independence is tremendous. China, China's achievement is enormous. We haven't even begun to see how important China is in terms of helium, for example, mm -hmm. is development. And as, so therefore, we are on the edge of the greatest triumph for mankind ever. But then what Just happens to make it? What, then what happens to the currently dominant nations, to the UK, I, to the US? When I take of my, of my old friends from Russia, I think of them as being my old friends from Russia, <laughs> still fighting it out. Mm -hmm. trying to win that battle, and I just keep hoping they're going to make it. They can do it. Sir, but in that case, when those big nations, I mean the UK and the, and the US, when they are cornered, are they prone to extreme steps like a nuclear war? No. 
Why not? Because they would be all mutually destroyed. Do they care about that? Yes, they do. Is it a reason why they didn't start war on Iran? No, it's because they're just so corrupt. You don't know what they're doing often. The President of the United States is one of the most corrupt persons on the planet. For what he wants. We're talking that he needs to go, but uh, he needs to go. He needs to be thrown out of office. There's no question about it. But who's going to replace him then? <laughs> Almost anyone. No, what you, the problem? The, essentially, what you're looking at, you're looking at a probable breakdown of failed presidents, failed leaders. These failed leaders are just going to fall off one after the other. The danger that I see is chaos. What do we do to prevent it? Victory. For, uh, for example, I would take, case, take the case of uh, Putin. Putin has a problem. Putin will do an excellent job. But... Putin has to manage himself very carefully in a very complex situation so that he does not fall into something that can be turned into a trap. So my concern is I'm all for, I'm all for Putin because he's doing the right thing. Well, I don't know if I agree with him on everything he says or does or so forth, but that is, I know what is needed because Rush, the cooperation of Russia, China, And India, together with the BRIC nations, and now this includes Africa, mm -hmm. this is now what is going to be the future of mankind. Does that imply a change of ideology? Absolutely. What kind of ideology should be? A new conception of mankind. Do you happen to have any ideas on that? Yes. Could you share? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. I do. I'm, the point is that, that mankind needs that kind of change, and I think we're ready for it. I think that the best thinking people on this planet, who may be relatively few in number, but in terms of what their influence is, these guys had better get in there quick, because we need them. Sir, thank you so much. And just to remind you, our guest speaker was Lyndon LaRouche, one of the most experienced American analysts and the founder and director of Executive Intelligence Review Press Service. And with this, we end this edition of Burning Point, brought to you by me, Yekaterina Kudashkina. Thank you so much for staying with us. Goodbye and take care.